Hello everyone, and welcome back to Triple Crown War Gaming, where you join me, the Law Master, for my first impressions on the Vampire Counts um, Legacy Army list for Warhammer: The Old World. So I'm going to have a chat with you about some stuff that looks like it stands out to me in a positive way, uh, and I'm going to have a little look at some things that have changed that I think um, have have really sort of uh, got me scratching my head about the way this army might look. So. Starting out, I'm going to go with the Blood Knights. Probably not a huge shock. We've seen so far that Knights are going to be really powerful and dominating force um, in the old world. And uh, Blood Knights seem like they are going to be able to compete with some of the best. Um, so the Vampires overall um, seem to have lost their ability to march. Um, so you need to have this... Uh, uh, this special rule which is called Dark Vitality and everyone in your unit needs to be able to do that and the Blood Knights have maintained that rule which is great. Unlike in the previous set of rules they've lost their Frenzy which is actually really positive in terms of the fact that it's going to help me to direct these Knights uh, a lot better. All of the kind of shiny stuff of the really best knights in the game, so counter charge, first charge going in there as well. Um, these guys have also got Indomitable 1 to help them uh, with those pesky uh, lost wounds from losing combat. So um, they've lost their strength 5 from the previous set of rules, which is a bit of a shame to me, but they can take lances. They now come with a cursed weapons, which give them a minus uh, 1 AP characteristic and a magical attack. Um, so that's going to be great for subsequent rounds of combat or for rounds where they get charged. Obviously not ideal, but it means that they're still going to have some punch through. But what I quite like about them more than anything is they feel like they're going to be quite flexible. Um, I can leave them in their heavy armour or I can upgrade them to have full plate armour. I can purchase drilled for them if I want to. Um, and my uh, Castellan can have a vampire power or a 25 point magic. Uh, sorry, and or a 25 point magic sword. I say and or, that's not really right. I can purchase both, but I'm obviously, um, I don't have to purchase both is what I'm saying really. So I could have just a magic item, or I could have just a vampire power, or I could have both. So, <laughs> got a bit excited there. Now, something else that I think looks really good um, in terms of flexibility for this unit is the Martial Pride rule, which is every model in the unit can issue and accept challenges like they were a character. Um, however, they cannot refuse a challenge if a challenge is issued by a model belonging to this unit could accept it a model belonging to this unit must accept it but again they can all accept so you can just put any old blood knight in there it's not the end of the world um two attacks each is ace three attacks uh for the um castellan and they've maintained a nice healthy weapon skill of five uh they've got initiative of four slightly above average um a little disappointed they didn't get up to the five levels Overall, these guys look like they're going to be a real threat with those two strengths, six attacks each. And a lot of flexibility in what they do. So I like them, although I do think if you start to really go mad on the command, the full plate, the drilled, um, the vampire upgrades, they can take a 50 point banner, you're going to find that they get really expensive because they do start out at quite a pricey 39 points each. Uh, but definitely one for the uh, one of the winners, I'd say. Uh, looking at this book now the second unit I'm going to have a quick chat about is the black coach now I'm really not 100% sure with this um, I think it looks better uh, than before but like I say I'm really not sure chariots definitely look really great in this set of rules and the black coach has gone up to toughness 6 which is really really good because um, obviously we we want we don't want it to be taking wounds from kind of low low strength weaponry and this gives it protection against things like crossbows and handguns as well um, which is great um, it's got impact it's d6 plus 2 and it's a heavy chariot so they're going to be a minus 2 modifier which feels really really strong um, magical attacks on there again indomitable 1 really helping if it does get on the losing side it's kept its terror which I'm a huge fan of Terra, I've always been a huge fan of it, and this is probably this is why for me, I've uh, I've sort of kept it in my uh, in my list of things that I think are winners. Really, um, it's got an armor value of three plus as well, which means it is tough to to get through um, because armor has in general got a little bit worse. So this is really well armored, 
Um, now, the spectral scythes carried by the wraith on the back ignore armor now. They're strength user and they ignore armor. So, anything that, um, that removes armor is very, very good, in my opinion. And I'm just going to double check and see if that was the same for the cam wraiths as well. Um, it is the same for the uh, cam wraith heroes as well. So, um, really like the... Uh, really like the um the fact it ignores armor but sadly it is only strength three now so mixed bag there when it gets through it is really going to stick so don't mind that but the coach itself has got some real flexibility as well um it can be a spectral coach which means it loses its impact hits but gains ethereal and fly and you do that in the command phase so uh, let me just double check exactly how that works. The black coach used to represent this. It may become incorporeal. Um, and yeah, you just... Uh, yeah, during the command sub phase. So you just say, well, I'm going to make it incorporeal. That feels super flexible. Because um, now that the um, chariots can march, you can go 20 inches with that bad boy. Um, it's moving eight anyway, but the crucial thing is it's going to really help to stop it getting pulled out of position or blocked off by crucial enemies. And... Um, that's really punchy it's just a shame really it's not large target so you can't kind of flip it to the flying coach and then charge straight over the thing that's in front of you but i mean overall it looks pretty uh scary to me but i really think you're going to want to when you do your kind of charges you're going to want to be in regular coach mode rather than incorporeal coach if you will because i think you want those impact hits d6 plus two at strength 5 with a minus 2 modifier is what makes the black coach really, really scary now. So, really like that one, but uh, but I think you're going to need to think really tactically about how you get the most from it. So next up, I'm going to talk about another huge winner, and I think these guys are a, a massive winner, and it's your humble necromancer, particularly your master necromancers. There's been a lot of talk online and we've seen a lot about it and I'm going to talk a little bit about vampires at the end of this video. Um, but necromancers are a big, big winner. Um, they can take dark magic illusion on necromancy, nice and flexible. They can be up to level 4 wizards, which is brilliant. Um, and they are, the, they are sort of based without buying specific upgrades or options. The only um, characters that can restore wounds to your army effectively. So... Um, they've got the Invocation of Nehek, which I won't bore you with all the details because you can read it for yourself. But ultimately, your Wizardry level plus extra wounds is what they're giving back a lot of the time. And that's huge because these guys can get to level 4. So you've got high Wizard level, only really only way to sort of uh, feasibly access that. I don't think Vampires can get up to 4, I think they can get only get up to 3. Um, they have got a nice price price tag as well. The level 4 is only 130 points. Very cheap. Um, and because of the changes to Vampire's leadership, leadership 8 is a huge leadership value now um, for these guys. And your army's still got to be kind of commanded by a wizard. Um, so these these are going to be very much, uh, very, very sort of viable as generals for you. Um, uh, interestingly, got dark vitality. It makes me think of a vampire more than it does a necromancer. But again, this ability for themselves to march on their own, and we know that wizards outside of units feel really, really powerful in this set of rules. So that's definitely a huge bonus for them. They're going to really be able to get into position. Regen five plus, very much like the Tomb Kings. The army's got a lot of army wide regen. These guys get five plus. Um, and I, I just think that they're a big winner because they've stayed very low points. They now have that really kind of dominant position of being the, the, the level fours in your army. And I, th I think because of the invocation of the heck as well, you're going to need to take these guys. So I feel like um, I feel like it is a kind of a step into pre -early, much earlier editions of Warhammer Fantasy Battles in a way where you did see a lot of necromancer-led armies, particularly Heinrich Kemmler when he was the kind of main necromancer special character. And, and this feels like a return of old really in that way to that so those of you that enjoyed necromancers and, and kind of raising stuff up and that sort of feel for your undead um which i think kind of pulls really strongly out of the warmer fantasy roleplay um you're going to love this supplement because it's really allowing you to do that in all of its kind of gory glory if you will he <laughs> see classic vampires line um i've still got it so <laughs> um 
Oof. Lots of, uh, of elements in all of that. I really like those three. I think they stand out as particularly uh, big elements of the, of the army. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick look at some of the magic items that, um, that are standing out for me at the moment as well. And, and I've got to say that this really is me talking almost exclusively about magic standards. Because I think all of these magic standards in the Vampires collection here look, look decent. So um, the banner of the Barrows, um, got to go on a White King now, sorry, White Lord, Battle Standard Bearer now, um, 65 points as well, so pushed up in price, but the the bearer of the banner, um, always, uh, and their unit, I believe, sorry, I should just read it, shouldn't I? Um, when the unit carrying the banner makes a roll to hit, a roll of a 3 plus is always a success, regardless of the target's um, weapon skill. Now that seems really good, because that will apply to anything I put in there because it's not it's not um, what's the word I'm looking for it's not um, whites like it used to be it used to be grave guard or black knights it's now just during the combat phase the unit carrying a band of barrows makes it a hit roll so yeah seems really good always hitting on a three plus is ludicrously good um, Drakenhof banner is also very good 50 points this one improves the unit that's carrying its regen by one Big fan. Get your Grave Guard up to regen 5 plus. Um, but again, you can get your characters on to really healthy regens with that. The Necromancer, for example, comes with a regen 5 plus, so you could get him up to a 4. Really spicy. Uh, the next one, I'm going to just go through all of these, so I really like all of them. Um, the Screaming Banner, I, I really want to like this. Um, you roll an extra d6 and discard the last result when taking Fear text checks against the unit. Um, I just think it's a little too many points, if I'm honest. I think it's a bit too expensive because. Um, you need those bigger unit strengths to make sure fear kind of kicks off. I think fear is really good. Um, I just think that it is, and I think this banner is good. I just think it's a tad too expensive, sadly. Um, but I've mentioned it anyway because I, I do like the effect. And the standard of Hedish Vigor, this one I really like. Um, the unit that's carrying it gains reserve move. I think that's crucial. I'd get that on a unit of something like Grave Guard or Black Knights. Something that can't march because a lot of stuff can't march anymore. So I really want that on there as an extra move. So really, this was me talking about magic banners. Um, in fact, it's probably going to say magic banners on your screen. So big, big fan of uh, the magic banners, particularly um, the three that aren't the Screaming Banner. And I like the Screaming Banner. I just think it will probably feel too expensive to use all the time. And then I'm going to finish up by talking about the immortal kind of Lords of the Night themselves, the vampires. The reason that I bought a Vampire Counts army and the reason that I collect them. And there are positives. There are positives. Um, still maintain vampire powers as a separate allowance. Still kind of got 100 points of magic items. Um, they still can be wizards and have a fighty stat line. Um, they've got Indomitable 2 on your Vampire Counts. Uh, only one on your... Vampire Thralls, um, that's your your old-fashioned Lords and Heroes, if you will. Um, both got Regen 5+, uh, both got the Dark Vitality. Um, they are flammable as well, so they will lose that Regen if uh, hit by flaming. But, and it's a big but, guys, because I'm not normally someone who likes to moan too much, but the Vampires themselves have really been hit with the bat, particularly the Vampire Count, or the, the old equivalent of the Lord, if you like. Um... I just feel like he was a prime candidate for a fourth wound. Where other characters have kind of come in with fourth wounds. I feel like he was a prime candidate. I would have perhaps had three stat lines for a vampire. I would have had a count and a lord. And had the lord kind of stepped up a bit like they've done with the duke in the Bretonian book. I think that's a bit of a miss. Got to be honest. I feel like there was an opportunity there. But if you just compare him to the old lord stat line. They've lost initiative. They've lost attacks. And they've lost leadership. And the leadership loss is huge. It's two points. They've gone down from leadership 10 to leadership 8. Um, and you don't use leadership as much with Undead, but it really feels like I've been punished there. Um, no access to full plate armour on them as well, which I think is a real disappointment considering the Blood Knights can take full plate armour. You'd think that that would have been a given to kind of bump onto them so you can put them in with your Blood Knights like that. They do have a good variety of mounts, and like many uh, armies, they've got access to a dragon, which looks like it's it's viable, and wouldn't need to be my general anymore, because he's the same leadership as my necromancer, uh, master necromancer, which I'm going to include. So, there is that positive, I suppose. Um, but, no rules to allow them to wear armour and cast spells, and that feels, to me, to be really, really harsh. Um, 
Isles can do it. Whereas Chaos can do it. Um, I feel like there's another one that can do it, but not the Vampires, which I think that's really, really harsh on them, personally. And I think that's a real shame, because my Von Karstein type Vampire, if I wanted to run that, and the Von Karstein ring is in here as well, so it feels like a huge miss to have not allowed me to have that as a, as a rule. Um, that hurts. The Vampire powers overall are decent, but I think you've lost the standouts from previous sets of rules from sort of 7th and 8th uh, in particular from both those sets of rules I think you've lost some of the real standout powers now I know there's a lot of people that will say that it was a bit boring you saw the same stuff and I agree but I don't think that that will be any different with this set of rules I think you'll see the same vampire powers you just won't see the ones you saw before but yeah I do think it's a shame with the vampire powers they do seem to have uh, reduced in number quite drastically and have lost um, some of your real big hitters so yeah, that that overall is a real shame to me, uh, because there's a lot that there's a lot to like about what they've done with the Vampires book. There really is. Um, I love the banners. I love the um, Blood Knights in particular. Look like that real scary force again, which is great because I want to feel that way. And I definitely think that there's an argument for there's there definitely feels like doing undead Bretonians will be really really viable with this uh, with this. Uh, with this grand army as well, if that makes sense. So, I really like that fact too. So, there's lots to like. I just, uh, I just a touch disappointed with my vampires at the end. But um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Let you let me know if you think I'm miles off the base here, um, or if you think there's something I've missed that looks like a real gem already, or something you've tried that you really enjoyed. Um, and uh, and we'll uh, be back real soon for another one of these reaction type videos. And make sure you keep checking out our. Um, our battle reports, we're going to have lots of brand new exclusive comment, uh, content coming to TripleCrownWarGaming.com in the coming uh, weeks, so make sure you head over and check that out too. Remember to tag your friends and like, subscribe and share. Then head over to TripleCrownWarGaming.com and become a knight of the realm today. What, what are you doing mate? Are you alright? Do it for Warhammer! <laughs>